me we have my gorgeous ex-colleague, always involved from you, Plan. Um, I better read it from here. <laughs> Lindsay Ball, born 1979, lives and works in Manchester, UK. She is exhibited nationally and internationally, with recent solo exhibitions including Into the Light, Night, Into the Night, yeah. Um, Bowley and Workman, Somerset, UK, 2023. And her first museum exhibition, Mirror at Huddersfield Art Gallery, UK, in 2022. Group exhibitions include The Power to Dream, Puss and Not, Gallery Paris. Who's no, yeah. Who's no? 2022, Love is the Devil, Marlborough Gallery, London, 2022, John Moore's Painting, Prize Walker Art Gallery, Liverpool, in 2021, and British Painting, Space K, Seoul, in two, uh, 2019. Awards and prizes include Atlantic Centre for the Art Residency in 2018, Elizabeth Greenshields Grant Award, 2017, Liverpool Biennial Associate Artist Award, 2016-18, Red Mansion Art Prize 2010 and Brendan London Pie Prize 2009. She is represented by Bowley and Workman and will be undertaking the prestigious Palazzo Monte residency in Italy in March. The yeah, year. which is really soon. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> Can we all come? <laughs> I mean, so many things I need to organise for it. Right? I think we need a field trip out there. <laughs> yes. It's a great out there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I am a painter in Rome Studios, same, Manchester, and I'm, kind of, I'm going to talk about my most recent work, which is what I showed at the show in uh, Bruton, in Somerset, which is with Bowley and Workman, um, and they, as we said, both represent me. So, um, I'm also going to talk about as well as talking about my work, I'll talk a bit about, at the end about the gallery and representation because I think that's quite interesting kind of, to talk about. And it's been mentioned a couple of times here about how that, that works. So here we have one of the paintings that I showed there in the gallery. Um, and most of my recent work has been about women and as a female painter, this is really important to me because I'm exploring women in figurative painting through my viewpoint, so it's through female gaze. Um, and I made a series of paintings for the show Bruton. And this exhibition was titled Into the Night. And the idea of the exhibition was based around a cast of characters, um, and they were enacting some sort of performance during nocturnal hours, so entering this kind of transitional space between day and night. And as was mentioned by Katie, it's like a kind of performative aspect is interesting to me, for how women perform particularly, because I see daily life as a kind of performance um, and how this manifests itself. So some of the questions I'm asking within painting do with this. Um, another painting, Last Orders, this um, sort of changed whilst I was making the painting and sometimes the direction of the work can change when I'm actually making the painting and I like to sort of think about it in my head as like a paint to think. So I will make a drawing and I will be using an image to work from but it's not planned in advance and through painting, things can happen that will surprise me. And I think that's kind of really important for me in my work. Um, to be continually surprised by what you see. Um, the essence is kind of the same um, as how I started it, but it, the narrative kind of direction changed. So it became a painting about a figure the propping up a bar, um, she's sort of grasping the last straws of the night. She's alone and there's no one to serve at the bar. And I wanted like a real heaviness to the way that she was onto the bar, but at the same time, like an ethereal kind of ghostliness perhaps to the figure. Um, and then often I would think about titling work kind of after I've made the painting and I wanted to call this Last Orders to suggest that 
the space that she was in was in a in this bar. Um, so what drew me to this image? Um, I often work from fashion imagery as my sort of source uh, material, and in this particular paint, in this image that I was working from, um, the clothing was really interesting to me. It's kind of it felt historical, even though it's a really contemporary fashion image. Uh, and I kind of like the idea of um, working between times, so it kind of had a um, historical feel, like 1960s, 1970s, but at the same time I wanted it to be a figure that could be here today. Um, also, what intrigued me was like the shape of these kind of shoes, these the feet, it's super, super pointy. Uh, and the fact that the figure is kind of placing her foot on this highly patterned kind of carpet was interesting <coughs> because it was a, set, a small kind of dramatic moment that was heightened, I guess, through painting and through the colour within the, within the painting. So those like small moments, kind of quite intimate moments, are quite interesting to me. And then often the figures are uh, turned away from the viewer. Um, this figure is turned towards a kind of wall, um, and then the wall is painted really abstractly. Um, there's like a looseness in the way that I've painted it to make it unclear where this figure is and what's kind of happening. Um, <coughs> and there was a sculptural kind of quality to the to the dress that I found really intriguing and had sort of solid quality um, that seemed at odds with natural movement of fabric. Um, and then there's a strong shadow that suggests there's this light coming from one side uh, of the painting. Um, and perhaps it's a stage, perhaps there's a performance happening. Um, but at the same time, it's a private kind of moment. The figure's turned away and it's having an intimate kind of moment. Um, but at the same time, it's performative, which feeds into what I was talking before about life being kind of performative, the way that women perform you know, in daily life. Um, then there's a kind of groupings of figures as well as the as well as these solitary figures, um, where it's almost like a collective of women uh, and they form a unit. Um, something the image, the original image, was something the similarity of the hairstyle that I was drawn to because then it made me see them as a, as a unit, as, as rather than individuals. Uh, and I, that was interesting because it helps create like a synchronicity between the figures. Um, and they're kind of in a space and they're looking at something, but we're not sure what they're looking at. Therefore, there's this being forced out of the painting but at the same time, we kind of want to know what they're looking at. Um, the sense that this group of figures have a connection and a secret together is what I found interesting and entitled it Secret afterwards. Um, this is another painting from last year, 2023. So um, it's about slippage between high and low, between artifice and reality. Um, the, it's like really strongly illuminated which suggests that there's a stage uh, and the rags could be a costume but at the same time um, the rags are not really rags at all. Um, the clothing appears um, sort of oversized and shapeless and perhaps made for someone much bigger. Um, so the oddness and something being slightly off is something that is woven into the work and I use kind of again and again. Something that's kind of drawn to it, but at the same time it doesn't feel quite right. 
This is quite a small painting, um, made made extremely quickly, um, and kind of liked the fact that it felt like the figure felt like a ghost. There was a ghostliness kind of to the figure that really intrigued me, and I would emphasise that through the painting. Um, so I generally make paintings kind of in two sessions, like over two days. Uh, and also, I kind of make watercolours, and here's a watercolour that I showed also in the show. Um, and when I'm working with a particular image, I'll have to make a watercolour version of that image. Uh, try and figure out what is part, what part of that is important to me. Uh, it's sort of like a process of stripping back almost to an abstract image. And what I love about watercolor, in particular about as a medium, is it's, it forces you into a position where you don't know what that image is going to be. It's kind of, there's a bleeding and blurring that happens. It can be quite a sort of magical medium to work with. Also extremely frustrating uh, and often destroy many, many um, paintings just because they're not working. And you can't go back in watercolour at all. So I didn't used to see the watercolours as kind of works in themselves, I'd sort of see them as studies or drawings, but now I'm showing them a lot, lot more. Um, and they sort of help me be loose and freer within oil painting. So I use them in tandem with each other. And it's sort of Whenever I'm struggling in the studio or something's become difficult in any way, I'll go back to watercolour, go back to drawing, and kind of use those looser, freer mediums to help me understand what it is that I'm trying to say with the oil painting. So um, I show those paintings or um, there's some more, but I showed most of those paintings uh, in Bruton, which is uh, in Somerset, and that's where the gallery is based. And this is the gallery, it's an old chapel, uh, and we painted the walls blue, and the works were framed. <coughs> I kind of wanted it to be as dark as possible, even though there's a light coming from those windows, but I wanted it to be as dark as possible. Um, and that's how the watercolours were shown um, in these kind of coloured frames and as a, as a group. So, um, but the gallery's been running for quite a long time. Um, and to talk more about the gallery, um, it's run by two women, Gemma Hickman and Alice Workman. And um, I used to be with Gemma's gallery, which was called Bo Lee. And then she joined forces with Alice, who used to work at House and Worth in Somerset. And they became Bo Lee and Workman. So they now have a gallery together, which I think is really, really good. It's kind of like, sometimes if you're working in a gallery, there's only one person at the head of that gallery, but I've got two people I can go to. They have slightly different opinions about stuff, but they're mostly on the same page. Um, and they're not based in London, which um, I don't know, is quite interesting because a lot of the artists, they work with are, are also not based in London uh, and that gives them a slightly different uh, way of thinking I think. But because they are both um, similar age to me I suppose, they've both got children, uh, I've got two kids and they both have two kids each 
we kind of understand each other and we understand the precious time, which is what you talked about before, juggling the time and the fact that you can be incredibly productive in the time that you have. Um, and so I think it's quite a good nurturing um, relationship that I have with them. Uh, and they're very much in it for the long haul. They want to nurture and support their artists as they develop um, their career. They don't want their artists to sort of just disappear and go off with another gallery. So they are in it for um, hopefully the long, long term, which is nice, nice to know. Um, because I think there's a lot of anxiety around galleries and <coughs> galleries dropping artists and taking on different artists. Um, and if you are an artist, you're already fairly, you have high anxiety levels anyway. So you don't really want to be dealing with all that on top. <laughs> um, um, that's it really. Any questions? <laughs> Never ever ever like draw 
use um, pencil or anything like that. Um, outline with paint and then just kind of fill in where areas of light and dark are going to be. And then think about colour and where the colour is going to be. And then when I come to do it the following day, I will push some of the areas of colour and go in and do more detail. And then put in some of the darker areas as well. And work kind of in glazes really. So you, you can sort of see in this painting that you can see through to a pinky kind of black um, behind behind the sort of second figure on the left. Like there's that pinky dark pink is kind of coming through. And that probably was the first layer that I put down. And so I put like a darker black over the top. Um, so what happens when you work like that in glazes is that you get, a, you get depth to it um, and I always allow those other layers to kind of come through because that's the other work, you know, that's parts of the painting. Um, it doesn't always work like that and and I guess another part of my practice which I don't really talk about much is failure and I, because I work quite quickly, I also destroy paintings quite quickly and if it's not working for me, I will know if it's not working on the second day that I will reprime my canvas and reuse it. So sometimes under these paintings there's lots of different paintings. Yeah. It's quite nice that commitment to just almost like, I suppose the relationship to your watercolours that it has mm. to work yeah. usually like... It has to work at the moment. Uh -huh. yeah, and maybe if it doesn't you allow that there might be lots of failures to one success. Yeah, yeah. And so I, it is a frustrating process because obviously I want every painting I make to be fabulous, you know. Yeah. Um, but I've learned to accept it and the failure is part of it. Yeah. As it's it's just about understanding in my own head what, when it is working and when it isn't working. Because that can be hard sometimes, you know. You think it's great and then you come back into the studio the next day and it's like, <coughs> it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. Yeah. Uh, and it's hard to take that. It's like, oh shit, I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just ask as well, like if you put your coloured ground down and how you bring it back to white, like if you're on the left and you just paint a layer of white over, you're not you're you're kind of just um because it's almost like you're painting in transparencies. Like. Yeah, I guess that comes from the watercolours, like you know how on watercolour you'd leave yeah. The white would be the paint. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I'm letting the ground come through for that white there. Sometimes I paint white on top, mm. but I try to avoid using white quite a lot, really, um, unless it's really intentional. Can I just ask, does that mean in a way that you're thinking about using glazes, but everything will wet? Because obviously it can't dry. No, like the first layer is dry. It's all dry. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's very thin. Strange when you use water colour techniques, but with a oil medium, is there something going on there? How do you use the oil? Um, yes, yes. I did go through a period where I thought I want to make oil paintings like watercolours, mm -hmm. so I tried to do that and I just couldn't, couldn't do that. I can't. So the, the very different mediums, yeah. you sort of want to accept the nature of them. Yeah. That's why watercolours kind of so lovely like that, you know, when it moves across the paper. And so you walk away, and then you come back, and it's completely different. <laughs> but there's, yeah, there's a certain. I, as I said, like I, I do learn from the different ways of working, and they do inform each other. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask about your subject matter and how you capture it? Is it a <coughs> video? Are you going out and looking for? Well, I use found images. I use images that I find. So. Um, are uh, mostly online images and then they are transformed through the painting. So you wouldn't necessarily know that that's from that mm -hmm. particular place. Um, yeah, that's so you're looking for something that resonates with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm looking through lots and lots of images yeah. and it has to sort of spark within me and it's almost like in my head I say, I want to paint that, um, and then I'll make a drawing to s sort of figure out whether that, that's going to work or not for me. But 
yeah, it has to sort of almost like hit me, you know, like shh, a spark. Like, yes. This, this, <laughs> this one, you look like you're in there, you know, you look like you're also over there. And right, yeah. Yeah. Appraising yeah. them, really. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not. I was never there. <laughs> Can I just ask, sorry, you go first. How, how do you approach them? How, how, do, how do you decide on scale? Scale. Um, I sort of think a certain image is quite intuitive, really. Um, I would think a certain image needs a certain size. It's almost, I can't even explain that process. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something about, this is a quite, well, it's not small, but it's smaller than some of the other works. And sometimes with a lot of detail and a lot of figures in one painting that creates quite an intimate um, sensation if it's on quite a small scale. Um, so I think about scale a lot yeah. and do I want the figure to be life size? Do I want the figure to be bigger than life size? Or do I want it to be this really intimate kind of painting? Sometimes I might make a larger version and a smaller version, but um, not not that often. So it's yeah, it's quite intuitive. Yeah. I was just going to ask a really boring question <laughs> about what medium you used to achieve the glazes. Um, so well, I don't want it's to like a combination. No, it's not. It's not top secret. <laughs> um, so I use sometimes like. A pre-made glaze medium but most of the time I use lower dissolvent with Damar varnish and stand oil all mixed together. Wow. So that's it. That's super, super revealed. <laughs> and has that been achieved through trial and error? Yeah, it's trial and error really and there's a vast array of mediums that you can use mm -hmm. and I almost find that confusing. Mm -hmm. So I stick to like, maybe two or three. If I want it to be glossier, then I'll put in more of a demo varnish or stand oil. Mm -hmm. or thin it more if I want it to be thinner. Um, and of course drying times, but if you want your drying times to be quicker. Yeah, use less, use less oil. But liquid I used to use quite a bit as well, I don't use that so much. No. Um, and there's also health and uh, environmental Considerations, isn't that for us? Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean disposing or just, no, just? I think using it all the time, also inhaling it as things you think about as you're getting older. Well, if it's lower dissolvent, it should, should be fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I use gloves as well when I'm painting. I used to do terrible things when I was younger, like you know, wiping paint off my hands with white spirits. <laughs> it's like, what? The <laughs> um, so that oil is fine. Did you know that? Can you fresh the oil for everything? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 We can get those olive oil soaps um, that are quite good for cleaning brushes. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same. Anybody else? Any questions for Lindsay? No. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay.